Hi, Vikram. Thank you for doing this. Hello, Suresh. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome. Um, I'll start off by asking you, we are all self-isolating. So how are you spending time? What are you doing? What have you been up to? I uh, I just finished editing my film, uh, AK vs. AK. I am um, I was supposed to go on the floors with uh, my Amazon show, Stardust, but of course there's some uncertainty right now. We're supposed to start shooting literally in like day after tomorrow. Okay. So that's in prep. So we're figuring out all our sort of stuff around that and um, spending whatever free time I can with my daughter. Uh, she's five, so almost five. She's got her birthdays in a couple of weeks. Um, and uh, trying trying very hard to stay off Twitter and get all the bad news, but uh, can't help it. Are you doing dishes? <laughs> also, yes. <laughs> No, that's there. That part of that, doing the dishes and uh, the helping out in the house and all that. <laughs> that's the part of. Okay, what? okay. Um, Vikram, of course, it's been three years since Trapped release, and uh, it's something that people would probably want to look back uh, during these days of self isolation. Of course, Shaurya had a completely different and more nerve wracking uh, situation to deal with while he was in house. Um, Tell us how, uh, I mean, can you relate to what's happening in some way to the way in Trapped was well, shot? Yeah, I mean, in some way it's, in, it, it's interesting, even though the reasons are completely different, but there's an interesting sort of, uh, I, I guess a correlation to maybe the training that one needs to be able to go through this process of, you know, um, I think, uh, the bit of whether you know it's the rationing and it's it's uh, whether it's it's a lot of that whether it's just knowing what's coming. I think in Shaurya's case, of course, he had no clue, so therefore he has to make do. But we know what's coming, and I think there's a lesson there for all of us to be able to um, you know maybe to ration well and 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 sort of like. I mean, in fact, just last night I was watching this film called uh, The Platform. You seen it? El Hoyo. Yeah. Um, again, it's just like it's all, so much about I think world and excesses and all those kind of things. So yeah. I mean, at that point in time, of course, there was no correlation. But when you sort of like look at it today from that eye, you're looking at the entire fact that oh, okay, there's 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 a there's a message in there about maybe sort of being able to um, control our capitalistic tendencies. But I think that's maybe reading too much into it. So it's, it's great hindsight, but yeah, <laughs> it, was none, it was none of that when we started the film. Right. Now, uh, could you tell us how the idea of Trapped came about? It was, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was, uh, it wasn't my idea. Uh, it, it was uh, this uh, writer called Amit Joshi, really, really sweet guy, um, who, from the cold, sent me an email saying, I've got an email address and these are two ideas that I have. And I'm one of those people who actually reads every email I get. So um, I read it and I thought, um, I thought this idea was pretty solid. I thought, okay, it's interesting. Guy stuck in an apartment for X number of days, what happens? Um, and I, so I wrote back to him and saying, do you have a screenplay? And he, he went silent on me, like radio silence for a month. And suddenly I get a ping 120 page screenplay um, in my inbox. Um, and I, I, was, I was reading that and I was like, okay, there's, there's something here. There's something here which can really be really interesting and cool and funny and, you know, all those kind of things. And I was also going through a phase at that time when Lutera, after Lutera, like nothing, I mean, 2013 Lutera released. Uh, I tried to get Bhavesh made with a couple of actors. It didn't really work out. Um, I was about to get into AK versus SK at that point in time, which eventually was also not going to work out. So I think I was in that state of mind where I really just wanted to make a film. And I'd been, I'd spent the last two years before that producing so much at Phantom that I was just like, I'm like, you know, I'm not a producer, I'm a director. Yeah, I, I mean, I am a producer, but I prefer directing. It's my, you know, it's it's the thing that I, that I love to do the most. So this film was one of those like, I really want to do this, but I'm going to have to find the time to do this because I'm, and then the moment AK versus SK didn't happen, that it, you know, it crashed and burned, uh, immediately I was like, okay, this is a film that I have to make. And I was completely determined. I met, um, I met Rajkumar at a screening from Masan, I think it was. Um, and I asked him, I said, what are you doing? Like, how, this is a story. What do you think? And he's like, it's great. Let's just do it. Um, and then when AK didn't happen, I just called him up. I'm like, what are you doing next month? He's like, I'm, I'm free for three weeks. I said, great. That's all I need. I just need three weeks. And I'm going to shoot this film. He said, really? I said, yeah, really. So I literally jumped into production. I, you know, we, we jumped into it just completely blind. I just got my, the same crew that was working with me on, um, you know, AK and, uh, Bhavish before that, I'm like, guys, we're just, we're jumping into something. And we literally pulled a crew together, you know, jumped into it. 
and uh, in i think 3 weeks after that we were like in production and i told madhu at that point of time like get me whatever you do just get me funding for this film so he went through all the hoops that he had to you know convince reliance and uh, we were up and running now you know uh, trapped is a very difficult film to watch which is also a testimony to how well made it is um but having lutera lutera behind you did you have the pressure of doing you know something which will be a sure shot at the box office because all seven and trapped is a survival drama but it's something experimental and it's niche and you know it it's quite risky in that sense no i don't think so i haven't i mean i don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing but you know and, and i get a lot of people who tell me that oh you need to make a, a a box office movie you need to make something that that sort of like works over there and for some reason there hasn't been a pressure that i have really felt and i like i'm saying i don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing um maybe it's a blessing that i don't feel that pressure but maybe it's a curse that i don't feel it because you know in the sense that i've actually been lucky that i've got producers who are willing to back me and actors who are willing to sort of like do this stuff so you can actually you know go out there and uh do those things i think at that point in time the desperation was just like i just want to make a film it wasn't it wasn't so much about um but also just the film that excites you right is like i just feel that every film that i've at least tried to do has been something that at the moment has has excited me to go out there on the floors and to do it and to spend the next year year and a half of your life you know chasing something and and being obsessed by it and waking up every morning thinking about it and if if you're not then really what's the you know um uh, right. is it worth it in the in the long run and like maybe because i had the luxury of not having to worry about that that you know it's been uh, better for me Uh, uh, but yeah but after lutera i was more about just i just want to do something different something different something fresh something that i you know that i think um works okay yeah. so on the face of it here's a small budget film there's literally one character mostly in it it's set in one house a flat um so it almost looks like easy to do but i'm sure you must have faced a lot of difficulties you know whether it's finding that correct location or even building the desperate um you know what the desperation that shorya goes through yeah. so what were some of the most difficult parts of making track there were two things one is i think just just making sure that uh finding the tone for the film i think for me that was the that was the more difficult part and we spent i remember spending a lot of nights sitting in the office by myself you know trying to work out those what is your escalation right because we always learn that filmmaking the writing part of filmmaking and the editing part of filmmaking is all about escalation of information so it's like how do you escalate this in the perfect way where you know your your feeling the anxiety that he's feeling and you're feeling those besides you know what's repetitive what's not repetitive what should be there what shouldn't be there um and that was and those parts were still moving when we even got into production we're like okay we could do day 3 on day 2 and we could do day 2 on day 3 we actually broken up the script into like more days so the script was more like pieces of paper were like day 1 happens day two this happens day three this happens Sim simple one lines because it wasn't we didn't get into so much descriptive stuff in the scene ke ye hoga ye hoga ye hoga ye hoga more about okay he's going to he's going to see the act for the first time and when we're on the set we'll really instinctively figure out how we're going to do it it's a film that i was quite like look we have to shoot this in sequence a because his beard has to grow naturally you know uh and we're in one location so we have the luxury of doing that so we shoot in sequence it was it was good for me it was good for the crew to to really uh you know figure things out as we were sort of going along so one of the things was finding that as getting those escalation bits right but also finding the tone you know i i didn't want to make a pure survival a genre survival drama you know like a a castaway or a buried or one of those things i felt that there was there's something really funny about the situation of this guy locked in there and how do we get humor into this without making it feel like your your without but at right. the same time making the audience really invested in the moment and it's not so much about oh we're laughing at this guy but we're not also scared for him at the same time i think finding those so it's it's part horror it's part black comedy it's part survival drama it's part action you know in in in, in certain sequences and i think finding that tone was what me and my cinematographer and and raj would you know discuss a lot is that when do we be detached enough to actually get the humor in the situation when do we actually get into the guy's character so we approached different scenes in different sort of ways the time when he has locked into the apartment for the first time is a very detached scene if you if you see it. it's all mostly long shots you're rigged on the door you're seeing him through another door you're seeing him wide and 
you know you're not on a close up in that moment you start to get personal a little uh, uh, a little later so just trying to find those moments where you know you we we what's our audience's perspective on those things that was a bit of a struggle that we kept discussing um finding the location here was another was another big big decision which um we were so and, and even till today I, i really don't know what the right decision on that was quite honestly uh, because we had two options one option was this apartment that was in there was a mada colony in in pavai just a little off the jvlr and it was brand new you know seven or eight buildings built around a little circle and there's no one had moved in over there and we go one one to the apartment on the top floor and you can you know see the jvlr at a distance it's like it's within touching distance but not quite there um which was also pretty amazing you know you're there and you're alone and you're sort of screaming and even if your voice echoes around there no one else can hear you right um and then the other option is where we eventually shot which is this building which is in the middle of prabhat devi you know which is way up on the 30th floor um where it's like you're up there and there's a city around you and at the same point of time you're almost living you feel you're living in luxury but you're sort of stuck up in that building um and really till the last minute we kept going through the entire thing okay this 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 in this location this 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 is this in this location you know pros cons pros cons pros cons and um and then we finally went for this um and through the entire shooting i kept thinking was that a better location and i am sure 100% that if i chose in that location i would have been going is that a better location and those are the calls you make in that moment you never know and i'll never know unless i remake the film in that location i'm never going to know what was the better option to go with so that's a call those are those those dreaded calls that directors have to take you know uh, there's a lot of these calls that one one takes in whether it's on casting uh, or whether it's on you know these kind of location things where you you like both equally but you have to take a call on something and then you have to just cross your fingers and hope you made the right decision uh, so that was a, that was a that was a tough call that was a, for me personally that was a very tough call then okay okay now um, you saying that you shot uh sequentially uh, which is a rare thing to happen in cinema um did rajkumar i mean that that would have been helpful for rajkumar to sort of build his graph through the days that he's in isolation but was there any pre prod that he had to go through to get into the mindset of somebody who's in this situation and gets desperate um i i didn't make him go through any pre prod quite honestly because i was like okay let's you know uh, i think the more innocent you are about the process and the more innocent you are about what's going to happen to you the better it's going to be for an actor to be unprepared of course he knew the script right. you know, I, i couldn't go full mike nichols in where like right. <laughs> putting him in locking him in an apartment he's like what the hell <laughs> <laughs> uh so i uh so he knew but i said let's not workshop this too much there's not there's no reason to workshop this where we are like here's the apartment this is the zone this is the place we're going to so sort of like do it and then let's just jump into it let's not rehearse let's just jump into it and uh, see so what i don't know if he did any homework i didn't ask him um i know that when we when we got into it it was more about it was more about just discussing a lot of the characters of like who is shore what kind of guy is he um and then it's about working the extremes of of character right so who's the guy you want to you want to get a guy called shorya but he's a bit of a fuck to and then get him stuck inside a building right well, fuck to is one of our so sort of like working titles as well you know like <laughs> felt it just made too much about the character as opposed to situation that's why we you know um but it, it is like that so how do you take an extreme character you know you take an extreme character who's 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 scared and who's a, who's who's a bit of a loner so therefore he doesn't have very many people to contact who not going to worry so much about him um maybe his family doesn't live in bombay maybe they're somewhere else we don't explain those kind of things but we sort of like okay here are the extreme so is he a, he he is um, a slightly isolated uh, not the most outgoing person which you those are the things we established in the beginning of the film so okay now you take that guy now put him into the situation how is how is shorya going to actually develop his courage you know i think that was that was one of the that was some of the things we spoke about but besides that like what were some of the improvisations that rajkumar did on shot or something something that you remember of and oh uh, he's he's so good at those things it, and with rajkumar you don't realize it at the shoot you don't he's not one of those actors who does something you know like oh wow that's so cool you see it on the editing table you oh. see the subtlety of the look of love in his eyes when he's looking at gitanjali's character you look at the subtlety of his fear you look at the subtlety of certain actions certain tics he does so when you're shooting you're not 
you're not really paying attention to that. It seems like he's, yeah, he's going by the road, right? He's going by, okay, this is what we need. We need this, we need desperation, we need this, 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 this. And it's only on the editing table, and they're like, that's amazing. You know, what he's done there is amazing. What he's done there is amazing. But because he's such a, he's such an, he, he, he's, he's such a, you know, a, a well-trained, uh, dedicated actor that he was, he was, and I, I don't think I could have done it. You know, there's very few actors who could have done that role, like Rajkumar, because he's the kind of guy who like, Okay, Raj, here are your big beats, like this, 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 go. You know, he doesn't need uh, direction in that kind of sense. It's like, I'm going to shoot, I'm going to sh- roll for eight minutes. Um, and you're going to have to sort of like do all these kind of things. Um, and he was amazing in that. Uh, but some of the improvs, uh, a lot of the scenes with the rat, it was like, those were, those were, you know, at least his, his expressions, I was all completely improvised. I didn't tell him what to do. I was, I'm as fearful of rats as anybody. I mean, I'm probably the most fearful person I know of rats. I think that was part of the, it was a, a process for me. I think I want to do this film for me to purge myself of my fear. Of course, it hasn't changed. I'm still fearful. We get a rat on set? Yeah, yeah, we got a rat on set. Yeah. That was a real rat. Okay. And um, and even with the shooting of the rat, it was like, okay, how do we, what do we do it? I remember Siddharth, my cinematographer, asking me, like, how do you want to shoot this rat? I said, I think we should shoot the rat, like, how Sergio Leone would shoot, you know, a Western, like, you know, big close up and <laughs> put that into a character in this film, <laughs> you know, equally, um, equally important, probably has more close ups than, than, <laughs> <laughs> creepy close ups, yeah. <laughs> the zooms are on, man, the zoom, I remember we actually got a zoom in, we actually sort of like go into that rat and it was all very dramatic. <laughs> right, right. Now, um, now, the whole sequence where he kills the pigeon, um, how was that thought out? Because here's a vegetarian who's reaching that level of desperation where he has to now kill a pigeon. <laughs> we, uh, again, it's what I said, it's like, it's, it's extremes, right? How do you take a character and you're putting a character into extremes? So part of his his being a scared part was the fact that he's, a, he's almost a militant vegetarian. Right. He's, not, he's, a, he's a militant vegetarian. And when you put a militant vegetarian, I feel it. I just say it. <laughs> Hi. Um, he's a he's he's a militant vegetarian, and when you have to put somebody who is that kind of person into this kind of situation, so what's an extreme? Like, what's the worst thing that a vegetarian has to do to be able to survive is actually to eat meat and not only accepted meats like chicken and fish but to actually sort of like go and go an unaccepted meat like a pigeon yeah kill- which is where i was coming from because i'm a non-vegetarian i eat chicken mutton everything and yet the thought of just catching a pigeon killing it and eating it is just well not just that it's like we i i eat anything right but can i actually catch a live chicken kill it skin it and cook it no i can't you know but so you're making a staunch vegetarian militant vegetarian so like go out there and sort of like do that in extremes like what do you do when you're when you're that desperate for food what will you do so i think part of it was that and uh but the scene i think with him and gitanjali was just you know one of those like flashback scenes okay let's just do this and again completely improvised i just didn't i didn't tell either of them what to do I said, this is the scene. You're a non-veg. He's a veg. This is a lunch break in your office. You guys are sitting by yourself. Uh, you're trying to convince him that you want to, that you should try some chicken. He says no. And you just, guys, just take off, right? Mm-hmm. And remember, again, they just took off. And we're just like rolling cameras. And I was laughing on the side because I was just enjoying what they were doing so much. And they, they went to town and they both got in this sort of like militant, non-vegetarianism, militant vegetarianism. <laughs> so, so, just making a statement in terms of food choices. Well, they they are. It's just like, but it's it's because they were so. You kind of like depend depend on what side of the fence you are. You can you you want to believe either of them. If you're the person who believes in non-vegetarianism, yes, like I agree with her. But he's making a point, and it's the same. It's vice versa as well. It's like right. you like you're, you're like I agree with him, but she's also making a point. And I wanted to sort of like find that bit of a balance, but more about. I think that scene is more about just like sort of like you know how he feels about that, and then the next cut literally is. As a pigeon on the floor, you know what I mean. And that that moment in itself is just so. I remember that cut. People telling me like that was the most disgusting cut. <laughs> and like, after that, oh, we talk about vegetarianism. It's like boom, we have this pigeon. <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> now, what, do you remember the most uh, memorable feedback or reaction that you got to trapped? Uh, 
any anyone from the industry or outside well, i mean I, I think the 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 most i was so i was really i mean i was scared right i didn't made a film for a while i was really scared remember the the premiere happened at uh, mani in 2016 yeah. and i was petrified right so me and Siddharth, my cinematographer, we we came into the screening. We saw the line outside, which made me even more petrified because there was people who had been standing for like five, six hours, and I'm like, no, 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 I can't take this picture. Um, and the movie started. We just quickly went off to you know um, uh, TGIF. In it was in uh, the PVR icon. Had a few beers. I didn't watch the film. You know, I didn't. I just like I can't. I can't watch this film. And I came back right for the ending. And the standing ovation and Q&A, I'm like, oh, wow, people actually sort of like, you know, like this film. Um, it was, that was lovely. That 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 premiere of that film was lovely because it just, you know, it it, it uh, just made one feel, okay, chalo, kuch to kiya hai, which is interesting. Um, but yeah, the industry had interesting reactions from like, I can't watch this film. I can't. I saw, I tried to see it for 20 minutes and I couldn't watch it. And I love that reaction. I was like, that's great. <laughs> you can watch it. It means it's working at some level. Um, and then people, yeah. And then, you know, uh, Ranveer, I remember, you know, liked it so much. that He's like, can I help you promote this film? And he, he did a whole thing where uh, he saw it and he helped us sort of like promote the film. So, yeah, we had interesting, interesting <laughs> reactions. You know. Okay. Um, now, on one level, there's also a comment on herbal loneliness in Trapped where, you know, you have Shaurya who's trying to reach out. Uh, he's, of course, in a place where he can't get out. But there are people around him. He's screaming out for help, but nobody's reacting. So, and we see so much of that on social media today, uh, especially with the youngsters. So was that also some layer that you had thought of uh, while writing or while developing the script? Not not really, and, and a lot of people have brought this up. It's like you know that it's an it is a bit of an allegory on urban loneliness, and it was, it, that wasn't my intention. I wasn't trying to make a statement about it. I think it it was maybe a little subconscious. It, it sort of like worked itself in in a way where um, you know I'm I'm uh, kind of in a sense commenting on it, but not really sort of like doing it. But yeah, but the fact that here's a guy. There was, I was looking at it more in a sort of like a tragedy format in the sense of tragedy or an irony and that's like an ironic tragedy in the fact that you feel that, you know, Bombay being the city of dreams and where everybody is so close together and it's, you know, pack of sardines and all that sort of stuff. And yet, um, there is this thing where every man is an island. Uh, but I was using that every man is an island bit more for about when does Shorya discover his own man inside right so it was more about the fact that here's a guy again extreme fuck to vegetarian isolated not the most outgoing character somebody who's you know even who's who's when he tells his friends for example that that i'm gonna go there like eh, whatever you know um this is apartment um and i think to put that character under like when does he eventually get when does that inner shorya inside him wake up to actually go out there and do something, do the bravest thing he's ever done in his life for his own survival. Right. Um, I think I was using that urban loneliness is more for that. It's like, there's a tragedy to the entire fact that when you think that, yeah, when basically like you think that the world might help, the fact that they don't. But yeah, there is that one girl. There is the one girl on the terrace across who sees that cardboard, who thinks that maybe somebody's living up over there, that she can sort of like go and help. Almost comes all the way up um, and then just, you know, get scared and leaves. Um, doesn't follow through. But there's also, I think the I think the 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 greatest comment on that was actually the Watchman. Yeah. He's the he's the guy who becomes the metaphor for urban loneliness, the metaphor for the world not really worried because it's it's almost like and which is typical, right? It's like everybody's so focused on their own job, you're not looking at like who's right and who's left. And here's the guy who's just like he's been left to sort of guard this building. And he has no clue that somebody's even living up there in the first place. But does he even bother? The TV that you know falls down on a landing above him, he has no clue that it's actually over there. You know, so there are those sort of like uh, those sort of like minor comments. But they were all for Shorya. I don't think there was that much of a large comment about urban loneliness in that sense. Okay. Now, uh, Vikram, we are all homebound for another twenty odd days. Um, what what are the films or web shows that you would recommend to people to watch during this time? Watch the classics, man. Watch all the classics. 
and every I mean, if you just give it yourself a mission of saying I'm going to watch all of Billy Wilder's work or Hitchcock's work or Kurosawa's work, I think there's more than enough material over there to be able to really have, you know, where you can enjoy yourself and, and, and you know, see a lot of these stories. And um, so, yeah, I would highly recommend for people to watch. Um, literally go through the entire Disney and Pixar catalog, go through, you know, Hitchcock's catalog, Billy Wilder's catalog, John Ford's catalog, Scorsese, anybody, you know, there's a, there's so many filmmakers that you can sort of like do it. And even in the series, like I, for example, haven't seen, I've never seen The Sopranos. Um, you know, that's one of the things that I would love to sort of like sink my, 10 seasons of it, you know, sink my teeth into. The Americans is another show that I'm, that I'm really wanted to, because the moment like in your real life when you're like, oh God, there's five seasons or something, six seasons or something, you can't watch it. But now it's like, okay, I have the time to be able to, do that, but I'm actually also spending most of my time uh, trying to write. It's something that I haven't done for a while, so that's what I'm trying to do. So yeah, my watching is going to be more limited, I think. So it's more like spending time with my daughter and family, uh, helping out in the house, and you know, just keeping everybody entertained and trying to write, you know, as much as I can. Okay. Now before I let you go, um, you've been working on this intriguing film titled AK versus AK, where AK stands for Anurag Kashyap and another AK stands for Anil Kapoor. What can you tell us about the film? It's a Netflix film. Huh? It's a Netflix film. Uh, it'll be out, I don't know when, second half of the year, I think. Uh, it's got Anurag and Anil playing themselves. And it's about a director who kidnaps the daughter of a film star and makes him search for that daughter and okay. films the search to be his next movie. And this is like literally the pitch. We finished shooting. It was great. I, had, I don't think I've had more fun making a film in my life. And especially because of Anurag and Anil, because they're both like incredible. They're both amazing. And they're playing themselves. I mean, that's amazing. That's amazing. I know they're playing themselves, and it's totally amazing. And just you know, just I, I like I'm saying, I had I, I've had a blast shooting that film. Everybody's like, you're you're very happy on set. I said, yeah, because this is great. <laughs> that's all I can say right now. But the cut is done, and uh, hopefully soon. Let's see. Okay, great. Thanks a lot for talking to us, and all the best for AK versus AK. Thanks, Rish. thank you so much. Bro. Lovely talking to you.